Oh, crap. I duplicated it. That's the opposite of what I want to do. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That's great. Meanwhile, I noticed that my Go Panthers fun screen name has been shortened to simply Go Pant. Go Pant. <laughs> Go Pant. Like a dog. Yeah. Like me right now, I'm so fucking sweaty. Have you tried, like, getting really loud air conditioning and, like, moving it directly adjacent to the microphone? Shut up. I have central <laughs> air now. Very nice. <laughs> Ooh, Congratulations. The podcast gets slightly successful and you manage to get, like, central air. I also have central air at the moment on account of I only have one air conditioner in a house running and it's big enough that it, you know, cools the whole place. Mm. You're welcome. Thank you, Liam. Okay. What are we here for? What are we here for? We're here to do a podcast. So let let's do that. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, I I I see here some interesting lime green fire trucks. Oh yes. Uh, uh we, hmm. we have to do the introductions though. Oh uh, yes. Hello and welcome to Well, there's your problem, a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. Um, I'm Justin Rosniak, and I am a person who is talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. I am the person who is speaking now, and my pronouns are she and her. God Liam. damn, I just took a bite. I know. I know what's happening. Mate, uh, hold on. I'll, I'll do bits to like cover for you. Uh, no, I'm good. Actually, no, I'm, good. I, I, I'm good. I'm Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he, him. Now back to mute for five minutes so I can finish my dinner. Okay. What are you eating, Liam? Nachos. Nice. Mm, delicious. They're delicious. Thanks, Corinne. It's like not really a podcast friendly food, though. No. No, it isn't. It's, it's probably pretty friendly for listening to podcasts. Yeah. If, if you, listener at home, have some nachos, go ahead and eat some nachos. But uh, mm -hmm. don't, don't record your own podcast while trying to eat nachos, otherwise you'll have to like do the mute button dance that, that Liam is currently managing. Yes. So what do you see on the screen in front of you? It's a bridge. But most of it is on the ground. Hmm. Doesn't seem very useful. It's not supposed to be like that. Uh, Today we're going to talk about the Florida International University pedestrian bridge collapse from back in 2018. Oh, we're getting more current with these. Yes, well, the NTSB released the report, which I then skimmed over, so we could do the episode. <laughs> the thing's like 120 pages, and I only had, like, today to work on this. <laughs> but before we do that, we have to we do... Have to do the goddamn, the goddamn news. news. Okay. Uh, our boy is uh, yeeting himself. I was about to say, uh, Jeff Bezos is uh, about to go into outer space because he wants to get as far away from Earth as possible when he's not CEO of Amazon, which I guess... <laughs> Is he's about he, to become not CEO of Amazon. He's gonna, like, skim the edge of space. Also, he's taking his brother up there, which is... Uh, okay. And th they're gonna, like, uh, do a flight to the edge of space and then come back down again. I mean, I... It, it just always seemed to me like, like it's, it's surprising. We have the world's richest man, world's consistently richest man, as opposed to Elon Musk, who is occasionally the world's richest man. And yet, the Blue Origin space crap is so much crappier than what Elon Musk does. It's weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it looks very, like, low rent. Like, I, I'm going to use a... In fact, I think it's the same font as we use for the goddamn news <laughs> on my, my space capsule. Uh, no, you can tell by the leg of the R, it's different. Ah. Yeah. I don't know, maybe maybe because I know nothing about this, maybe this is like some incredibly expensive font that like, you pay thousands and thousands to use and like, gets lots of design awards and looks almost identical to the font that we use for the goddamn news. I do like that his midlife crisis, as opposed to a normal thing like buying a Corvette or a 911, is to go to space. He said that the, the, the space was like the only thing he could think to spend his money on, which is fucking great. Just cool guy stuff. Dude, just like, and that's the thing is like, when Bill Gates is like, well, when you talk about raising the, the tax rate to, you know, 
whatever, 50%, I get kind of nervous. Like, what are you What are you possibly spending the money on? You're spending it on fucking farmland. Like, no, it's ours now, Bill. Well, yeah. He's also spending it on space, just horizontal space. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, I guess we can't say about his associations divorce with Epstein. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. Spent, he spent it on divorce lawyers for Melinda. He's getting divorced because he hung out with Jeffrey Epstein too much. Like... <laughs> yeah, which as far as reasons to be getting divorced go, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd probably divorce someone who hung out with uh, Jeffrey Epstein. I like and ideally, come on, ideally, man. I would take, uh, ideally, I would take, you know, half of their billions and billions of dollars of wealth. Mm. Yeah, she's not getting shit. Well, they didn't have a prenup, which is gonna be gonna be. Oh, so she is gonna lawyers. get shit. Yeah, she's gonna get a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, also, Melinda Gates, if uh, if you're listening to this, DM me. <laughs> yeah, um, I have also, a lot of watches I want to buy. Also, I guess DM me. Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah you, you know, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not selfish. We could have like a polycule thing going on. Never mind. On. Never oh, mind. God. That's too many things to balance. <laughs> No, nah, we we're, we got to keep this podcast a professional relationship. I mean, come on. I don't That's I don't want to wind up in a Cincinnati DSA s- situation. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but you two used to live together like professionally. No, it was like a Bert and Ernie situation, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We always kept it professional, especially at three a.m. Just flinging beer cans off the back deck. Yes. <laughs> um. I hope he crashes. I hope he crashes too. It'd be pretty. Oh, funny. so we can. Oh, so we can say I hope he crashes. But when I yeah, do, I'm it. not threatening him. I'm not going to do anything to ensure that outcome. Okay. We're no, hoping okay. for force okay. majeure here. We're okay. hoping an act okay. of God, a serious his, acts of God's yes. love, if you will. Yes. Yes. Fucks up this this incredibly bald, incredibly divorced man with too much money uh, and his and his spacecraft for dipshits. If 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 this guy doesn't crash. And the flat Earth steam rocket guy does, you know it. It there's no justice in this world. <laughs> uh, I like that you're still. It feels like you're still holding out hope that there might be justice in this world. <laughs> yeah, we haven't crushed that one out of Justin. Yeah, just yeah we gotta, we gotta make moves on that. <laughs> put your cynicism on uh, hat. Put your cynicism on hat. Cynicism yeah, put, hat. Put, on. put your cynicism on hat. Well, words no good, Liam. I kind of want to sell a hat now. It's like put your cynicism on hat. It's better than the discourse hat. Mm. We don't talk about the discourse hat. I don't <laughs> want to get. I don't want to get. I don't want to get canceled again. Um. Anyway, so I only put one news in because I thought we should just start recording. Yeah, uh, yeah. we were an hour behind. Yes. So. All right. All right. So I thought a good place to start this podcast would be to ask. What is a cable stayed bridge? It's a bridge deck held up by quote cable stays anchored into towers. Yeah, it's different from a suspension bridge. Yeah. Cable stays require less anchorage, but a stiffer de- deck, not deck, <laughs> deck, <laughs> to resist compressive load. Mm-hmm. I, I I too require a stiffer deck to require. Yeah. <laughs> Massive load. Cable stayed bridges look more futuristic and aesthetic than suspension bridges. Uh, that's a matter of opinion. The, yeah, way to go, Roz. And as such, they are in demand from clients who want that sort of aesthetic, i.e. morons. Uh, yes, so Liam just read all the notes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, end of podcast. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. I so, uh, hope we, we'll see you next one in the Tacoma Narrows episode. But cable right. stayed bridges are sort of like the modern aesthetic thing, even though they've been around since like the nineteen, the eighteen, yeah. Well, we talked other. about it on the Calatrava episode, right? Yeah. Like that's half the shit he makes is like a, mm-hmm. a funky asymmetrical cable stayed bridge. Yes. So like they're very much in demand by certain people who want sort of a modern like uh, aesthetic to whatever piece of infrastructure they're building. So like um, here's a here's a local one. Um, this is the Christian to Crescent segment of the Schuylkill River Trail, which is currently out for bid. Um, no, I don't like it. Sort of it looks like- tragic. It 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 looks like I know it's supposed to look like that, but it looks fucked up on purpose. This this only exists because uh, the local gas company wants uh, uh, to maintain access to a dock that they never use. Um, mm, but they could use it. Yeah, 
And and this Who knows is what the future holds. You know, this is one of those situations where you wonder, okay, is this is this span really being spanned most efficiently with this cable stay structure as opposed to I don't know, have have a deeper concrete girder? You well, know, it's you know, an, a one old guy with a ferry, and that'd be cool. You just like ring him, and he like sails across. Oh, that'd be pretty fun. Well, it's not even across; it's just down river. <laughs> this is right next <laughs> to the shore. Where the fuck do you need a bridge to maintain access to the dock for the gas company? Okay, <laughs> fine, but so you, but you need this like grotesquely overdone bridge to do that. Yes. Okay. I mean, fuck it, if you're just gonna do, like, um, infrastructure stuff and spend a lot of money by going into the Z-axis, why not do a tunnel? Just do a bike tunnel. Oh, that'd be, that would be complicated. Uh, but, you know, what, what are the effects of this is, you know, there's a very long design phase for this bike trail. Um, and it's been out for, it, it's been, we've been waiting for this thing for about six years now. Um... You know, and it's, I don't know, it's costing like 50, 60 million dollars, something like that. Some crazy Jesus amount of money. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know what, whether you need a sort of signature span like this when a deeper girder could have done just as well. But on the other hand, you want the aesthetic. Hmm. Aesthetic. 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 It, it, aesthetic. You, you can take this to its logical extreme. Mm -hmm. Um. This is the Bolt Bridge in Melbourne, Australia. It has these two towers, uh -huh. right? But it's a, it's a simple cantilever span. The towers are just there for the aesthetic. Stupid aesthetic. <laughs> yeah. Did, I mean, that's like, yeah. I, I want to build a couple of towers on this bridge. Yes. Which at least you could... It's more honest. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you could monetize it by making it an observation tower. I guess so, yeah. It has two blinking red lights on top. Maybe for fifty dollars extra, you can f turn the lights on and off. Maybe yeah, spell well, like something was, rude in Morse code. Yeah, I don't know. Stare into the light. I don't uh, think blind the yourself. Would like maybe that. the maybe make the light RGB. <laughs> gamer bridge. <laughs> I, I gamer hate the bridge. gamer bridge so fucking much. Never make a gamer bridge. Make a gamer bridge. No, if you're not pussies, you'll make a gamer bridge. Oh, it just, it's like hooked into a fucking Alienware case at one end. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a guy playing fucking PUBG. Full, yeah, PUBG, and it, oh god, and it's pulsing. I can see it in my mind's eye, and I hate it. You should see what my computer looks like when it's operating. But it's there, not there's, because there, my there's, there's 3070 R is out for RMA. There's RGB on my soundboard that I use to do the drops, and I I hate it so much. I want some nice. I want like, can we bring wood grain back? Can we bring like wood grain and analog switches and stuff back? My instead buddy of this? has a PC case made out of wood. Oh, yeah, and some maybe some brushed aluminum. It's, it's really nice. It's made out of wood by a company in the UK. It's a mini ITX build. If anybody wants to like recase a GoXLR soundboard uh, in wood grain, get at me because I, I I would like maybe have some like reel to reels going on it. Oh, Sp speaking of tacky RGB, we have to talk about Miami. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> the Godfather of it. Yes. So Miami is located at the mouth of the Miami River at Biscayne Bay. It was named for the Miami tribe, who's, uh, or Miami, right, whose territory surrounded Lake Okeechobee from where the Miami River flows. Uh, mm -hmm. This woman named Julia Tuttle from Cleveland, Ohio, owned 640 acres in South Florida next to the river and persuaded, uh, with the aid of a failed orange crop in North Florida, she persuaded. Uh, a certified crazy guy named Henry Flagler to run the Florida East Coast Railroad down there in 1895. This is the only time a land purchase in Florida has ever <laughs> gone right. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. This is not a not a not a Lehigh Acres situation. Um, <laughs> I should also say, um, depending on how long this podcast lasts and how climate change goes, at time of recording, Miami is a city in uh, southern Florida. They'll, they'll, for right now, they're yes. going to figure something out. I mean, I think it's going to, they're going to, they're going to just wind up abandoning the first story of every building. But, you know, <laughs> so, you know, Miami, it's got some really good art deco architecture. It's full of a bunch of Cuban refugees uh, who moved in during the Cuban revolution. 
A lot of them are rich. Some of them are not. Uh, not a lot in the way of manufacturing or heavy industry. They got a little bit, little teeny tiny container port. Uh, but it's always been about tourism. And uh, the city sort of expanded into this infinite radial plane called the Everglades, right? Hmm. Uh, so it's got lots of single family houses, lots of sprawl, lots of golf courses, lots of big roads. Um, fun fact, despite its glamorous uh, uh, reputation, it has the fourth highest poverty rate of any American city. That's crazy how that works. Yes. Hmm. Right after Detroit, Cleveland, and Cincinnati. Oh, uh, where are we? <laughs> um, good question. Or we're categorized as a major city and we're the poorest, right? Uh, I think my, no, because if, if it, Miami is definitely a major city. Nah. <laughs> I hadn't heard of it until today. <laughs> Just like my what? Yeah. What? No. The, the the other fun thing about Miami is, of course, what I was alluding to just now, which is that it is built on extremely porous limestone yes. in a swamp. Um, it it is at like zero feet above sea level, and uh, even as we speak, they have to run giant pumps to try and like keep the water out of people's basements. Miami, we're not as bad as New Orleans yet. Yeah, well, yet, yeah, yeah, like one fucking like degree of arc to the right, and uh, it would have been Miami instead of New Orleans, and you know. Well, I mean, the difference being that New Orleans seems to be able to handle flooding a little bit better. Um, well, that's because they, after the pumps they put it in two thousand five. They have yeah, those that, that, massive that and also, fucking pumps. That and also New Orleans isn't like it's an older city. It wasn't built as a monument to man's hubris. This is true. Have you been to Bourbon Street? I respectfully disagree with you. <laughs> Hubris in regard to alcohol, maybe. Uh, with regard to flooding, not so much. Hey, y'all want a 42-ounce smoothie that contains nothing but strawberry puree and Everclear? That'll you be want, $4. Yeah, you want one of those hand grenade things? And just throw up in a, in, a, in a gusser for four to six hours? I did not throw up. Corinne threw up, but oh. I didn't. We're all very proud of you. Yes. Thank you. You should be. So one of the things in Miami as it grew was they needed a big university, which was the Florida International University. We should, we should stop for a second here and talk about the University of Miami, which as far as I know, is not, it is not public and it's in Coral Gables. Hmm. Uh, in case you're wondering if you've heard of the University of Miami, that it's not public. I don't know. I think parts of it are in Miami, but I'm not totally certain. Not to be confused with Miami University, which is in Ohio. <laughs> and so this is the public one. It's like this part is of the, the public s- one, the state yeah. university system, right? Yeah. Why right. is why is it Florida International University anyway? What's international about it? It was formerly on Spanish territory. Is it? <laughs> no, it's Florida Gulf Coast that had the. Sweet 16 run back in 2015 and everyone was charmed with this like small school like everyone was charmed by Earl Roberts and then it turned out this like weird Ayn Rand worshipping ghoul was their Mm -hmm. chancellor and they got all sorts of shady shady funding for all sorts of shady places Uh, as far as I know FIU's claim to fame is that they had is it Lane Kiffin? That may have been FAU but you can't stop the Lane train who's now the coach (laughs) of Ole Miss I know nothing about the school, really. Mm. Uh, go Panthers. Yes. Oh, right. FAU is the Owls. So, See, it, this is Florida the thing. has too many me, schools. Me, me, me and Liam, like, our, our only knowledge of, uh, like, colleges that we did not personally go to, sports. Yeah. Yes. As it should oh, be. Don't, oh, I was going to say, don't sound so sad about it, Ross. So... <laughs> uh, Florida International University was founded in 1972 on the site of the former... Ta Miami Airport alongside the Ta Miami Trail. I don't know how to pronounce that correctly because I don't live in Miami. Um, They they still have the like control tower from the airport. Yes. Uh, Which is cool. It's it's cool. A little little bit. They're like, their president was like, no, we're not demolishing this. We're going to keep this this aircraft control tower in the middle of our campus. Uh, Had very rapid growth over the next couple decades. When it opened, it had an enrollment of uh, 5,667, and today it has 58,000 students. Yeah, uh, it's either the first or second largest uh, 
university by enrollment, like on one specific campus. Uh, oh, OK, because it's the fourth largest public university in the USA. Uh, yeah, but uh, it, it's it's I think Texas A&M has the most kids on one campus, but a lot of those include the whole system. And then like UCF is up there and uh, FIU now. Uh, it has about a million colleges with a billion degrees. The endowment's $200 million. And of course, they're still expanding. And they decided one place they needed to expand was to build new student housing uh, north of the Tom Miami Trail, right? Yeah, because you got to suck money out of kids. I mean, that's like, uh, we, we did a whole episode about this, about colleges. Yes, uh, did. Basically, they're sort of their real estate funds that incidentally give you a degree in dentistry or whatever. Yes. So, so they need more real estate because that's what real estate speculators do. Yes. So uh, look at this beautiful cityscape. I know, right? I I love the urbanism of suburban Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love I love to like sprint across eight lanes of traffic at three in the morning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine lanes Good of luck, traffic. Kids. <laughs> hope you're I hope you're sober for this. Yeah. <laughs> so that the Tom Miami Trail is what some people kind of awkwardly call a strode, right? It's not a street. Oh. It's not a road. It tries to do both. That's such a fucking Florida thing, a South Florida thing, too, to be like, oh, it's it's called like Orange Grove Trail, and it's fifty-seven lanes of traffic, yes. bumper to bumper. <laughs> yep. But it's both an arterial highway, but and uh, and a local street trying to serve local traffic, and it does neither very well, um, and it also creates a very dangerous environment for drivers and pedestrians. It's very expensive to maintain. And it requires a lot of enforcement of traffic laws, right? Um, mm, we've talked about those four-way intersections that just kill people. Yes. Yeah, there's a similar road uh, that runs through St. Joe's campus in Philadelphia, uh, and a girl was hit by a car doing something like 55 walking back from class, and she was, uh, she was not killed, but it was not, it was not pretty, certainly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where I went to school, Temple University, where I spent the majority of my school years, had streets running through it, and people would gun it at like 35 through this college campus. And these are one-way streets. We didn't have anything like uh, the Champs Elysees here, uh, but I just I can't imagine trying to go to class hungover at fucking like 7:30 a.m. and just getting absolutely railed by a car doing 70. Hey, you'd be more like, ah, oh, just kill me, just fucking do it. Just fucking just end it, please. <laughs> Trying to get to into fair, like the yeah. exam. <laughs> I don't want to be here. <laughs> like, really, you got to think: yeah. how bad do I want this communications degree? Yes, right. So you know this this route has no public transportation to speak of, and this stretch um, has inconsistent sidewalks. Not ideal for any kind of pedestrian activity. Least of all, perpetually drunk nineteen-year-olds trying to get home. Right. So, well, if the students want to like exist in a city, why don't they pull up their bootstraps and learn to drive? <laughs> yeah, learn to drive drunk. Just drive yeah, drunk. Get more drunk driving. Drunk driving will be safer than trying to cross this intersection on foot. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Florida International University realized in order to put student housing north of Tom Miami Trail, they needed a pedestrian bridge, right? So, mm. one of the things about pedestrian bridges over major roads is, is they, they, they are a last-ditch effort to solve a problem, and they don't really work that well, right? Tell me about it. Glasgow has a couple over the, the freeway that goes through the center of town, another of our great urban planning decisions. Mm. Uh, so if you want to get from where I live on the west end of Glasgow to the center of Glasgow, you have to walk across uh, a kind of precarious-looking uh, like pedestrian overpass over you know four lanes of seventy mile an hour traffic, which <laughs> fucking rocks. Oh god, no thanks. I even hated uh, Penn's Bridge. 
I was only over five lanes. Mm. C- catch me walking directly in the middle mm-hmm. of that bridge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and once I'm once I'm out in the clear like span, I'm fuck it, I'm running. I don't give a shit. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean I don't run, but yes. So these these bridges are they're inconvenient for pedestrians, right? Uh they're very inconvenient for disabled people. If you're in a wheelchair or something like that. Um, you know, especially if designers are using convoluted ramps instead of elevators. So hey, it's Calatrava again. Here's a nice here's a nice example. Um this is in Seven Corners, which is a big stupid commercial area in Northern Virginia. Say I'm a, a wheelchair user, I'm trying to go this way and I want to cross the street to go this way and then continue up the road, right? Yeah, you got to go up and down two perfect ziggurats and then across uh, well, four well, lanes of traffic. Well, no, because there's stairs here, which is relatively convenient, but I'm in the wheelchair. So I have to go all the way down to the horizon, come all the way up the ramp, then go across the bridge, then go all the way down the other ramp out of frame and then go up. And I probably added like a mile of wheelchairing <laughs> to get Fuck over this bridge. That. <laughs> No, thank you. That's ridiculous. So, you know, a better solution is to have roads that are safe enough for people to walk across that you don't need these big structures. Um, The other thing is, if you're an able-bodied pedestrian, a lot of people try and ignore these things, just try and cross the road because it's much more convenient, right? They're usually not very well integrated into a pedestrian transportation system like the, you know there's not like uh it, it's 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 usually an afterthought right um yeah unless but it, hey it's it's still better than the pedestrian underpass which is urbanist for you will be robbed here <laughs> i understand they somehow make that work in like moscow i know the soviet union was really big on those bear police <laughs> <laughs> Bear police. Yeah. Aw, Lieutenant Steven. <laughs> All cops are bastards, except for possibly Lieutenant Steven. So, you know, unless you're doing like a full Le Corbusier style separation of pedestrian traffic and automobile traffic, you should not ever need these outside of some specialized applications like, I don't know, hospitals or something like that, right? The pedestrian overpasses are bad. Just make the roads... Smaller and slower, you know. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. But uh, FIU didn't have any influence over the construction of massive stupid roads next to its property, so pedestrian bridge it is, right? And they decided, we're going to make it fancy. We're going to have a statement bridge, right? Right, and, boy. This, yeah. is, this is another problem with the American university. Too much money. Yes. yes. Not, that, not that you'd know for anything that like they spend money on students for, but like... For statement shit like this, like uh, we're oh, gonna yeah. get you know a uh, Calatrava to do the new medical school or whatever. Mm-hmm. Too much money. All right. So here's the design of the bridge. Um, now, Florida International University wanted this cool ass bridge to demonstrate their superiority in the field of structural engineering, since you know they're a major research school. They also wanted to do something called Accelerated Bridge Construction, because I think the oh, no. Accelerated <laughs> Bridge Construction Institute was on campus, right? Uh, basically, Accelerated Bridge Construction is you prefab the bridge off-site, um, and you install it over a weekend or so to minimize disruption to traffic, right? That's such a fucking clickbait-ass means of architecture, to be like... Uh, it, it, it's so designed to get the kind of headlines, as, the same kind of headlines as like China built fifty hospitals in one day or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's like, well, okay, cool, but what are you, what are you sacrificing in order to do that? And in this case, it's, I don't know, just a lot of stuff. It seems. Well, I would say that the accelerated bridge construction, in and of itself, it was not the problem here, right? Um. Mm. The bigger problem was the design of the whole thing, and what they decided to do was in order to show they're a high-tech modern university, we're going to build everyone's favorite kind of bridge, which is a fake cable-stayed bridge. Right? (laughs) My favorite porn site, fake cable-stayed bridge. Yes. Rule 34, no. 
<laughs> so all these all these cable stays are fake. They're just steel pipes. Right. Oh, good. So it's, it, 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 it's what, like a, a truss bridge with a bunch of shit on top of it's it? It's a truss bridge with shit on top of it, but the trusses are organized in such a way that they meet the cable stays. So you can see that the, uh, it's very inconsistent in the triangles. Oh, that's annoying as hell. That Yeah. <laughs> So it's so, so that you could like have this like through line which looks cool. Mm hmm. Yes. Uh huh. And then there's only one line but, of truss but, here but, but, through but, the but, middle. But 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 you could if you if you're starting with it like if it's a truss bridge with a bunch of ornamental shit on the top. Why have you made the truss bad in order to conform with the ornament instead of making the truss properly and then making the ornament conform with the truss? What we've done is applied Victorian ideas about ornament to modern architecture. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Uh, ornament. It's, it's first. like it's like what they say: function follows form. Function follows form. Yes. <laughs> So, um, you know, so this is, uh, there's a single truss down the middle, there's a walkway on the bottom, there's a roof on top, this whole thing acts as sort of an I-beam, right? Um, but the web is a truss, um, and the floor and ceiling are the flanges of the beam. And another thing they decided was they were going to build it out of concrete for some reason. Looks cool, couldn't get render right? I guess so. Well... They had a special kind of concrete they used, called self-cleaning concrete. Uh, 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 so it's gonna, gonna stay all white. like all gleaming and white. Uh, <laughs> so and I guess you can't. You, you can't use to, like the other big thing for this, which is like glass and steel, because like it's too transparently dangerous to have drunk seniors on a bridge made entirely of glass in a city where when it rains, it just s fucking swamps everything. Everything's a swimming pool in Miami. Yeah, you, you, we've, we've just made a slip and slide for drunk college students. But also it's above like uh, 10 lanes of traffic. Well, I would say you could quite easily build the truss out of steel, right? Hmm. But... They, they didn't do that. They decided instead to use something called post-tension concrete, right? Oh boy, this, this did not work. Oh, Jesus. Fuck. <laughs> uh, right. we've, we've accidentally made a goth slide. Goth I concrete. Did, yes. All right. So, self-cleaning, self-hating. <laughs> goth concrete. <laughs> All right. So, so our, our basic idea. Okay. So what's concrete, right? You have... Uh, it's when you... Put some rocks and some sand in a thing, and you mix it around, and then you spread it's it. Cement, it's cement and other shit. Yes, very good. In I just what the other shit is. It's very, very, very bad intention. Sand. Right? Um, you can mitigate this through reinforcement, which is adding steel bars to the concrete, and that's you know pretty involved to get in here right now. But another method to make it better in tension is either pre -ste pre stressing or post tensioning, right? Mm. So, so what we're saying here is that the concrete, you can put a lot of stuff on it, you can put a lot of weight on it, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you try and pull on it, it just pulls apart. Yes, and that includes if you, let's say, you have a some kind of vertical force on a concrete beam, you know, uh, while the top is in compression, the bottom's in tension, so it breaks real mm. easily, right? Um, one way you mitigate this is you either pre-stress the concrete, which means, you know, you take a steel rod, you stretch it out, you cast the concrete around the stretched out steel rod, and then you let it go, right? And suddenly it's the, the concrete beams in compression, right, without you having to do anything else. So you can add load on top of it without it breaking, right? This is one option. The other option, which is uh, more often used now, is post-tensioning, right? So you cast the concrete with a hole in it, right? You run some threaded rods through the concrete, uh, through the holes, right? And you put some big washers and nuts on the end, and you tighten them up, right? And that compresses the beam, right? Again, allowing you to add um, 
load on the top without worrying about it, you know, breaking, right? Just snapping in half. So you can use concrete more flexibly and in areas where it used to be very difficult, you know, for stuff like, uh, you know, long floor splans, uh, big long concrete beams, stuff like that, right? Hmm. Because then it's like, uh, uh, it's like what you've essentially made here is a truss of rebar with a concrete shroud round each piece of rebar, right? Uh, sort of. The mm. well, mm. okay. So uh, the way it's usually used is not the way it's used in the bridge we're we're about to look at, right? Because uh, you know, usually it's um, you know, I again, I I I got this. Uh, I I fucked this slide up. You know, you're just trying to add compression to the beam, uh, or in such a way that it can take extra tension. Um, mm. You're playing God with the forces. Um, okay, got it. But this is usually used for forces which are perpendicular to the direction of uh, post tensioning, right? Um, so, uh, which it means that for a truss, let's say, it's not ideal, right? Um, now. Generally speaking, trusses, you know, they follow some set patterns with set angles. They're made of wood or iron or steel. You know, at some point they were supplanted by simple girders once it was easier to roll big pieces of steel. Uh, they're never made of concrete, right? Because the forces are axial in the truss, right? They go along the length of the truss. Now, we've all played those bridge construction games. Yes. Where you start out, at least if you're anything like me, you start out by going, okay, well, I know I know how to make a bridge. You do a nice symmetrical truss, uh, and then the little truck drives across the nice symmetrical truss, and then one piece is just like, whoop, don't like that, breaks, and the yep, whole thing, whole comes, thing down. comes down. Yeah. Um, well, that just means that your, uh, your design has no redundancy. <laughs> mm. So... You know, one of the things is concrete, bad at tension, uh, and every member in the truss is, you know, generally, rule of thumb is, you know, they're either in axial compression or axial tension. I mean, there's some more advanced analysis about shear forces, but those aren't the main forces, right? Um, and concrete is bad at tension, so you just shouldn't use it in the truss. Um, theoretically, one thing you could do is use a post-tension concrete member in the truss, right? Which would mean <clears> that if I had a member that was in compression, right, I would then add post-tensioning to it, which was equal to the force, and, and then more, more than that as well in order to make that work, right? It just sure. seems to me like a very stupid way to do it. Um, Go Panthers. <laughs> which is why, I, to my knowledge, no one has ever built a concrete truss bridge um, until Florida International University tried to do it. Mm. So no one has ever built a concrete truss bridge successfully. Yes. And for good reason, apparently. There are mm. some truss bridges out there which have um, regular steel members encased in concrete. You know, for right. like, but um, just for like weathering and that sort of thing, just protection. No, yeah, but no one's done. Or a, even just because you want to make it look like that, like that right. seems like a responsible way of going. Like, right, I wouldn't do the whole thing out of concrete if you can make it look like it's made out of concrete. Yeah, without we, you know, yeah, which was like the whole <laughs> yeah, and that, yeah. that that seems to have been the impetus for them to do it in concrete in the first place was we want it to look nice. Well, if you if you want to do that, then just put some steel in there and then put concrete over it, right? Nobody will know. Yeah. <laughs> There's an FIU guy going, but I'll know. Yeah, but I'll know. So, all right. The design of this bridge, right? As we mentioned Ugly. before, fake cable stay. Um, it goes over. This is rough looking. Goes over the trail. Goes over the canal. Right. Um, FIU bid this as the, as a design build project. Right. So the same firm that designs the bridge builds the bridge. Um which is opposed to the more traditional design bid build where one firm designs the bridge and another firm builds it right so they they wound up with a, a consortium of a 
uh, of Fig Bridge Engineers. That's F I G G. They're out of Tallahassee and a construction management firm called Munilla. Um, and then because this bridge was so new and unique, an additional engineering firm had to be retained for peer review of all the calculations to make sure. Maybe you should have just encased it in concrete. <laughs> to make sure it was all sane and sensible. This was a firm called Lewis Berger. I'll right. be right back. I have to use the bathroom. Okay. Yeah, I actually worked for Lewis Berger and I just told them at the time, make everything more rigid. I'm really sorry, guys. I think I fucked up somewhere. I was about to say, well, concrete is pretty rigid. Yeah. Um I don't I'm I'm struggling to see how this could go wrong. <laughs> concrete trust, that'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Concrete concrete's strong, right? Trusses are strong, concrete strong, therefore concrete truss is very strong. Very good, very strong. Very plus, plus, it's got like the, the ornaments on the top, the fake cable stays that'll give it like moral reinforcement. This is Whenever true, Whenever the truss yes. is like gonna fail, it can look up at the cable stays and think, ah, oh, well I've got this thing like holding me up, even though it isn't really, and it'll give it like a psychosomatic effect. I heard that one of the, that there was a justification for this cable stay structurally, which is that it would hmm. increase the resonant frequency of the structure, and therefore it would be better able to resist vibrations <laughs> yeah, from because pedestrians. This is, this is always like a, a, a perennial problem with college students. They're always marching in step yes. over bridges. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got to put up the signs telling them to break step, otherwise the FIU's like ROTC division is just going to collapse this by themselves. Mm. I am back. What I miss? Uh, the, well, the FIU march in step everywhere. Yes. The what? The university that we're talking about, the Florida yeah. Internet, the School of the Americas, or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so ah, uh, the SOA. One of the things about construction is you actually have to build the thing, right? Mm. And at, yeah, people get very really angry kind of the if you don't. Part? Yeah, this, this people, like the, get, people get angry. People sue you if you don't do that. The biggest part of construction is you know building the thing. As a result, you know it's a good idea to run calculations for both the finished structure and for various phases in the construction project, right? So now this bridge was going to be built in several phases, right? So first they were going to cast the piers and the abutments at each end, right? Mm -hmm. um, then the mm -hmm. long span of the bridge here was going to be fabricated off-site, right? And they were going to place it in position using a pair of big, stupid transporter doohickeys, right? Um, yeah, it's like, the, it's like a truck, but the bed lifts up, yes. right? Um, and then the smaller portion was going to be fabricated afterwards, and then placed into position in a similar fashion. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, to, this is all to minimize disruption to traffic on the trail, right? <laughs> of course. Of course, yeah. I mean, obviously can't... Oh, you, you, you live in Miami. Nothing yeah. is going to stop you from uh, <laughs> sitting in, in your car in, bumper to like, bumper traffic on the Champs Elysees, right? 250,000 degree heat yes. at, the, at the fucking Duh. center Look. of Earth's yellow sun uh, yeah. with your, like, Starbucks <laughs> order simply vaporizing around you. <laughs> oh, because they're 7,000 percent humidity. So yeah, actually, you forgot the 7,000 yeah. percent humidity. <laughs> on the bright side, I'd love to vape my vanilla latte. <laughs> Involuntarily yeah. vape my yeah. I, I love to I love to live in South Florida, wind down my window and blast a cloud of like super cool <laughs> vape uh vaped frappuccino and kill a horse fly with it. <laughs> it's a terrible place. Florida was a mistake. Yes. <laughs> I, I, this is part of like a big American pathology about refusing to close any road uh, any any road for any reason ever. Oh dude, I know. And then construction happens in these shitty irregular stages, and it's just like, I would much rather you just close the road down and inconvenience me for less time. Yes. Than, than well, I mean, this, this is... weird, slow marching sh like, you say shit that. Dirge. You say that, but then you'll get the British psychosis, which is you close roads when you need to. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you know, you do research, uh, uh, you do repairs and stuff as you need to. But then, Everybody becomes absolutely psychotic at you 
Especially if they cannot see you working at that very moment. No, they do Hell that here too. Hell hath no fury. Yeah, like uh, a yeah, British they... person driving past a work site where they can <laughs> see no work happening. Yes, I've seen Top Gear. You know, they do that here too, Alice. Clarkson always getting furious. Oh, protect the workers that aren't here. All right. Anyway. 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 <laughs> anyway. So. Wow, it, get, it just keeps getting hideous, sir. Yes. So, here we go. We're, 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 we're looking at the bridge. Okay, so the idea here is member three, three, uh, mm-hmm. five, um, seven, and eight, uh, and ten are designed to be permanently post-tensioned, right? Uh, okay. The other members are not Except for, I gotta switch colors now. Uh, member two and member eleven, which are temporarily post tensioned while the bridge is being moved, because it's being supported. I think like here and here while it's being moved. So these would temporarily be in tension, even though they would normally be in compression, right? Yeah, I think there was some fuckery about exactly where they could place the bridge transporters, so like, th- yeah. they only had to close one lane of traffic. Dude, and co- other- just close yeah. the whole fucking road and do a good job, just as opposed close, to whatever yeah. the fuck this is. So, uh, of interest here is node 1112, which is over here, right? This is what we're going to talk most about. Um, so, this is, the nodes are the joints between the members, um, at each node, there's something called a cold joint, right? And the cold joint is when you cast concrete onto concrete, which has previously been casted, right? Um, mm. So, you know, here, 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 so on and so forth, right? Ideally, what you do when you cast concrete onto previously cast concrete is you rough the area up uh, in order to... <laughs> you take it out in the alley. You take it out in the you alley. Kick it, yeah. hard its feelings a little bit. Yeah. That way there's a, there's a better joint between the, um, uh, between the two concretes, right? Um, this was somehow lost in translation during the, um, during this, uh, particular bridge assembly. Um, yeah, they took it uh, out in the alley to rough it up, and three guys, like, broke toes trying to kick this concrete. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, can, you imagine, can you imagine that incident report? <laughs> I tried to rough it up, but the bridge hurt me and said my wife <laughs> didn't love me anymore, and that's why my kids don't talk to me. <laughs> Boss, this bridge is tough. <laughs> yeah, you got Tony in the back crying like a little girl, boss. <laughs> now, so the full bridge would include, you know, more more crap over here, another member that butts into node uh, 1112, right? But this was going to come in later, right? Um, and because of that, because you didn't have the forces from that other section of bridge, this bridge experienced different loading conditions, right? Hmm. So, all right. The incident uh, sort of occurred in agonizing slow motion. Over oh several boy. days. Oh, a nice change of pace for us. Yes. So, on March 10th, 2018, the first section of the bridge was lifted into place, right? Um, now, owing to the fact, again, the bridge transporter held the bridge from central points, the outer two members, uh, 11 and 2, were post-tensioned to a much higher force um, than they necessarily would have been otherwise, right? 280 kips. And a kip is a thousand pounds force, right? So two hundred eighty thousand pounds force. Yeah, me me trying to squeeze into my like size sixteen jeans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. So uh, after the bridge was put in place, uh, these two members were detentioned, right? And engineers right. immediately noticed a whole bunch of cracking started to occur. Near uh, node eleven twelve, like basically instantaneously. Yeah. Um, cool. In addition okay, to some <laughs> cracking, 
that had occur- occurred earlier in February while the, the thing was still being cast uh, just on site. I Ooh. like the ruler stuck in the crack for scale. Yeah, holy yes. shit. Yeah. <laughs> that tells a story, doesn't it? Yes. Well, I mean, some cracking is normal in concrete, right? Um, and right. context clues can be used to determine whether it's of concern or not. Um, at, but the cracking in node 11 slash 12 was the kind which was concerning. You know, it was about 45 times wider than a crack of no concern. According to the NTSB, yeah. oh. <laughs> I was gonna. I was gonna say a g- general rule of thumb seems to me to be that if you can stick a ruler into it, yes. like a meter stick into it, and it goes uh, down uh, three inches, yeah, yeah, that that's kind of a problem, <laughs> especially if the bridge is brand new. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so there's a couple issues with this node. Uh, just design wise, you might notice that there is a drainage pipe that goes right through it. So you have extra stress on the concrete right around that, right? Oh, good. Um, furthermore, Gotta lot- keep those clean lines. Oh, yeah. God. <clears throat> and then uh, a lot of the rebar in here that was holding it in place to prevent shear forces uh, was completely bypassed by a lot of the cracking, so that wasn't doing shit. Um, Great. Great. What, what you saw? Rebar. Yeah. So what rebar-ant. you're seeing here is you have. It says here, interface shear cracking. This is because this member in the cold joint aren't, uh, aren't, aren't uh, meshing well together. It's not doing much because the cold joint wasn't roughened up. Um, another thing you're getting here is flexural cracking. This is from member 12 being pushed northwards, right? Because, again, this, the, this member is not resisting shear at all. So... This guy's getting pushed north. Uh, you have punching shear cracking, which is also from all this, all this stuff moving north at a very slow rate of speed, right? <laughs> so, you know, the engineers, the engineers at FIG realized this was a bad situation, but they also thought, well, we could probably fix this later, right? Sure. We just need to get it in a sort of stable condition, then we can start to fix it, right? So their solution was, what if we bring the bridge back to the previous condition where it was fine, right? Oh, put the transporters underneath it. No. No, can't Uh. do that. That's a lane closure. Oh, Uh. God. (laughs) Instead, we're going to retention member 11, right? Uh Mm Uh-huh. Right. We're going to put an additional, since there's two tensioning rods, an additional, I think, 520,000 pounds force on it. That'll probably do it, right? Uh-huh. Oh, God. Um, and the engineers at FIG were not very concerned. I, there's some transcripts that were in the original report here. They were like, um, you know, so on... on the- my, my, my many we do not see this as a safety issue emails are raising a lot of questions which are answered by my many we do not see this as a safety <laughs> issue yes. emails. Again, we have evaluated this further and confirmed that this is not a safety issue. No, quit being cowards. Get on that bridge. Fig has further evaluated and confirmed that the cracks encountered on the diaphragm do not pose a safety issue and or concern. Okay. Safety issue and or concern yes. is a fucking great... That's some good lawyer speak, yeah. Again, yeah. there is no safety concern relative to the observed cracks in minor spalls. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. If I recall correctly, there was uh, there was a meeting that was held where uh, some inspectors and in, in, explained slowly and patiently to the engineer a record that uh, yeah, these these cracks look a lot worse in person, right? But uh, I guess the uh, engineer didn't want to drive all the way down from Tallahassee to look for himself. Oh, okay. One of the things here is that retensioning this um, the post tensioning too you know, it's full, full strength was not something that was on the plans, not something anyone had done any calculations for. And hmm. as a result, what they were supposed to do was submit that for peer review, right? Yeah. Or the other firm. Uh, and, but since the engineer record thought, well, this is just returning it to a previous condition, he didn't think he had to do that. So he didn't do that, right? 
<laughs> yeah, what do, what do you want? Approval for hitting uh, Control Z? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. There's no sanity check for a kind of bridge that had never been done before that was already showing cracking. Cool. Yes. Great. Yeah. All right. So that's terrific. Let's let's sort of look at our sanity check here. I think this is something which is relatively intuitive um, as to why this would make the problem worse and not better. Um, so your problem is your node, right, is being driven by a force which is axial to the main concrete member, right? That force has mm-hmm. two, com- two components, a horizontal and a vertical, right? And because this is at a very shallow angle, the horizontal dominates, right? So. How erotic. Yes. <laughs> and that's why we see uh, member 12 getting pushed outwards and cheering. Oh. Yes. So the idea is we return it to a previous condition by increasing the force on the post-tensioning rods, right? Which results in more compression, which results in some more clamping force, which is good. Mm-hmm. And a lot more shear force. <laughs> I, I have restored this table to its previously unset condition by sweeping uh, the 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 tablecloth out from underneath it. Yes, yeah. So the 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 post tensioning here is 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 not 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 helping you in any fashion. Um, but again, uh, Fig considered this to be no big deal, right? So they go ahead and do. The post tensioning on the morning of March fifteenth, around nine o'clock in the morning, and I believe during their last meeting about the cracks uh, that day, uh, it fell down. <laughs> oh, that's crazy! Oh, mm. that works. Yes. So yeah, one forty-seven p.m. The whole damn thing collapsed. Uh, Holy shit! Yeah, whole thing went down. It was all captured on video. It took about two seconds. Um, yeah. One worker was killed. Five yeah. workers were injured. They were all on the top of the bridge, I think, uh, right, right in this box where they're blacked out. Um, yeah. And then eight vehicles under the bridge were crushed, uh, and that left two dead, uh, or five dead, two seriously two injured. Serious. Well, the good news is that a fo- a collapsed bridge doesn't block any traffic lanes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got a full route closure here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, you know, we, you can't you can't risk it, you know? Some some woman vaping a vanilla bean frappuccino out of her Range Rover might get upset. Mm. Also the fact that all of the like structural members have big FIU wraps on them. Yes. Yeah. That's 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 awkward. It's that's very awkward. Pretty grim. Uh, so yeah, it's like being being crushed to death by a gigantic Go Panthers sign. Yeah, (laughs) but but pretty awkward if you were an alumnus of the university. Yeah, you donated a bunch of money to them, Mm -hmm. like an idiot. Don't donate money to the university. Never never give. Yeah, see the John Mulaney rant about giving your alma mater money. Yeah, donate donate money to us. Mm -hmm. Yes, subscribe to our Patreon. Yes. Yeah, so the thing so- we will also bug you, but not for like alumnus reunion uh, letters. So something blew out at the node, right? And member eleven was suddenly butting into nothing. So you had a fracture Just, up yeah. at node te- uh, eleven ten, and the deck fractured at the next uh, node, right? And then this whole section which was otherwise structurally sound, suddenly rotated down into the road, and, uh, yeah, fuck shit up. Not good. So there was an investigation after this, which obviously just concluded. Uh, wh- one, it revealed some interesting facts, like that the peer review firm was not qualified to peer review this kind of bridge. They, oh. they just oh, okay. they didn't know how to do it. I mean, no one knew how to do it. No one knew how to do it, though, right? No one yeah. knew how to do it, but there were firms qualified to peer review a bridge that no one knew how to do. Ah. And this was not one of them. I see. Okay. Understood. 
uh, NTSB eventually concluded the main problem was under-designed members, right? You know, you sort of basic back-of-the-envelope calculations, uh, basic trust theory indicated that forces were much, much higher than what FIG had calculated and designed for. I think something like 46% higher at node uh, 11, 12, and then 93% well, the is, higher at uh, 10, 11. <laughs> the thing is, it's not like uh, Florida International University had a school of architecture or an institute of bridge design that oh, had a bunch of like obviously uh, no. people who could, who could do those calculations. So you had to outsource it to, to these guys' fig. Yes. Just have, to, just have to outsource everything. Constantly, all the time. Hmm. Um, and you know, this was the, 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 the problems were exacerbated by a number of other factors, like the construction errors, and they had some, the, the, the engineers did load combinations which were not appropriate, but had those been corrected, it still would have fallen down, right? Hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, it's... Uh, it was a uh, big, big, stupid thing. Um, and the FIG uh, engineering firm has disputed a lot of the report and have been trying to argue that if the cold joint were properly roughened up, none of this would have happened. Mm. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so yeah. either. Yeah, I, I disagree. <laughs> but I feel like the main, the main problem here is that they just decided to build the stupidest bridge possible. For no mm. reason. Right. Just yeah. build boring stuff, Jesus yeah, Christ. Just, just build boring. Build boring. Build, build, build boring. boring, boring, boring company. Boring little... No. No. But like, there's... Like, we're obviously not against exciting architecture. We spent like a, a whole thing talking about the Sagrada Familia, but the point is that when you're in stuff that's like meant to be utilitarian, whether that's like bridges or nuclear reactors or whatever, don't do it in such a way that the that the function follows the the form, you know. Mm -hmm. I my big argument is don't design cities in such a way that you need pedestrian bridges. Don't design anything. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, writing was a mistake. Writing Guys, was a just mistake. Just return back to, the to like yeah. Guys are plowing. We, this, this shit never happened when you were plowing. You got to go back to stuff that has one set of plans and takes four hundred years to finish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not even Anne Prim, but like Anne Goth. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a medievalist, but yeah. a political medievalist. <laughs> For more, see our last episode yes. on medieval siege <laughs> uh, warfare. That's right. Goth concrete, but like differently. Yes. Well, you didn't have the concrete. cracks. Just when you step on the cracks, they just play uh, the cure for you. <laughs> this concrete is cracked like my soul. If you had, uh, if you, if you had built this with flying buttresses, it would have been fine. <laughs> 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 well, like that's that's the thing, right? If they had built the, um, even if they had built the like towers first, right, that they were gonna do last because they had the most time to do them because they didn't have to close any roads to do it, that would have worked like a flying buttress, right? The tower. Yeah. No, it's just like a pipe. Oh. They're, no, they're just, it's just been a pipe. It, it doesn't actually support anything. Okay. okay, can you cut this last bit out so I sound smart? No. Uh -huh. um. <laughs> so I, 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 uh, I think what we've learned from this is uh, don't build a big fake bridge. No, yeah. d d don't build a big fake bridge. Yeah. Don't build Miami. Don't build a university. Ornament is, in fact, a crime. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, well, we've a. Uh, There's your problem. We have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Oh, this is already an encouraging image. This image has been pre John Madden for me. Ah. <laughs> okay. Hello, WTYP crew. Hello. Hello. I work at a municipal water utility and wanted to tell the tale of when my coworker shook hands with danger a few months ago. Is this going to be another Cronenberg body horror story? I don't think so. <laughs> Probably. Okay. Our utility uses water primarily from springs and deep wells, as well as filtering creek water when demand is higher during the summer. Thank you, suburban lawns. Abolish golf. Yes. We only Abolish lawns. We only operate 24 hours a day, 
when we're running our filtration plant and use a call system the rest of the year for emergencies that happen during the eight hours of night when nobody is working. The story begins when my coworker was called out in the middle of the night to one of our deep wells. The chlorine detection system at the well had triggered an alarm after it had detected gas in the pump house. However, my coworker didn't notice anything out of the ordinary with the chlorine gas cylinders upon arriving, but did notice the well was pumping without any resulting water flow. So he shut off the well and waited for the chlorine alarm to clear so the problem could be fixed in the morning by people who weren't getting overtime, which we try to do when there isn't a pressing need for the water. Waiting did not help to clear the detector, however, and after an hour and a half of waiting, my coworker decided it was time for action. He had already inspected the separate room where the gas cylinders were, including using ammonia to check for any trace of chlorine around the cylinders in that separate room. Also during that time, the sink in the room had been running with nothing more than the average amount of chlorine in the system. The next step taken was to slightly open the ball valve seen in the attached picture. Um, I'm not sure which one that is. Not sure. Not sure that matters. Yeah. And you can still see the aftermath months later. Not only did water come out of the pipe, but so did a cloud of chlorine gas. The door... Uh Oh. (laughs) The door is behind you from where the picture was taken while my coworker was in between the pipe and the wall in the picture. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. L- luckily, he started running quick enough that he managed to get out before he breathed in any of the gas, but that didn't stop some of it from rolling out of the building. The next day was spent figuring out what the hell happened. I... <sighs> I don't know. Like, a chlorine alarm goes off, he doesn't even get, it like, a respirator or anything? Uh, I, well, I would imagine a better option than getting a respirator would be to leave the building. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Nature's respirator. Nature's leaving. respirator. <laughs> just get away. <laughs> yeah, just just get upwind. You can leave. <laughs> <laughs> Arizona. So I, I, another I, I saw a thing of like a genuinely like it was it was like national security stuff of like uh h- how to pr- best protect yourself in the event of a chemical weapons attack uh like a terrorist one a thing which has not happened outside of Japan to my knowledge uh and it was literally just you just go outside and go upwind of it just leave yeah i mean it worked for some people in bhopal yeah do you know where Upwind of you is right now? You should find out. Good Stop idea. the video, find out. Yeah. <laughs> After making sure everything was off and aired out, the department took apart the operating control valve in the left of the picture. That's, that's this guy. Mm-hmm. Big valve. The valve is basically the on-off switch for the well, where a rubber bladder slash gasket inside either blocks the exiting pipe or it doesn't. Oh, it couldn't open properly because a sizable piece of metal had gotten stuck inside the valve. The valve is programmed to get about half open, and it could only manage a quarter. We think the metal was something from the well drilling process, and the drillers had figured out it was heavy enough that it would stay down in the well, which turns out to have been a bad assumption. Uh, so it was like a thing of drill bit or something. Yeah. Gotcha. Because this valve cool. couldn't open properly while the pump was running, system pressure was too much for the well to overcome, so the water on the other side of the valve just stayed in place. Now, that part of the pipe also happens to be where we add chemicals to the water, which is hydrofluorosilic acid. Hydrofluorosilic acid. Hydrofluorosilic acid. And chlorine HFS. gas. HFS. Yes. Regulations require us to make sure tap water has a chlorine and fluoride residual, and since the well is going straight into the distribution system, we have to add those chemicals there. Yeah, of course they don't need to do that now that vaccinations are becoming mandatory. This is true, yes. <laughs> you can see the HFS tank in the background, 
uh, or the line at least, it gets added to the water through a vacuum that the pump creates when water is being pumped into the system. Since there was no movement in the water, there was no vacuum adding the chemical. While some wells use the same concept to add the chlorine gas, this well has a pump that you can see in the picture. That's, that's this guy. Oh boy. That chemical pump was running the entire time the wellhouse pump was before the alarm was triggered. Oh boy. Uh-oh. Wait, 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 wait. So, so when the guy comes into the chlorine lump, tell me the first thing he does is turn off the chlorine pump. No. Maybe. Uh. I don't know if that would have mattered. Hmm. All right, so to the best of our knowledge, the alarm was triggered through the stagnant water in the pipe, getting so chlorinated that even the water in the waste drain on the floor was becoming saturated with chlorine. <laughs> the floor drain in the main room of the building is connected with the floor drain in the chlorine room. It was wafting from that second floor drain to the gas detector, which is the first alarm given to us that anything was wrong that night. By the time the gas could be detectable from that second floor drain, it had become super saturated in the pipe where the chemical was being added and is why an entire cloud came rolling along with the water. <laughs> Jesus. Because the distribution system was using its pressure to push back on this water, the chlorine didn't travel in that direction where the sink is plumbed and, that didn't ha- and, and why that didn't have any odor when it was running for over an hour. So... Oh boy. What did we What did we learn? What did we learn? There's a new well uh, alarm that's been programmed, so if there's a low flow, it gets shut off within half an hour instead of two hours later. It's also oh, clear gosh. that chlorine gas is dangerous. Didn't know that one. No no. <laughs> but I guess we didn't learn that from the World War a century ago. <laughs> it's probably not going to be phased out anytime soon, no, this is cheaper than the alternatives, and this incident was only a near miss. Comforting. So somebody should probably like refurbish that floor. I mean, it's yeah. better, better that the floor looks like that than somebody's fucking alveoli. Yeah, that's, a, that's a um, that's a reminder. What, what even are the alternatives to chlorine? Do you use like uh, fucking like one of the noble gases or something? I, uh, I don't. I don't think that would. I mean, the purpose of chlorine is to kill microbes. I imagine to be something mm. else that's also toxic. Silver? Uh, yeah, it'd probably be, it'd turn everyone blue. Yeah, is, is there a downside? Uh, that's a good point. Um, you could use, you, you could just, uh, like, just start pumping the water supply full of, uh, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, antibacterial stuff. <laughs> you know, antibiotics, <laughs> yes, that's the word okay. I'm looking for. Copper. Ah. We make the pipes out of copper. The whole thing, just pump copper through it. Pump too. copper through it. Yeah, just it just it, it has to flow over like a couple of ingots of copper in a Nickel, matrix. I think I can't remember. Mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> with the world well, your problem, crew give an entire town heavy mm-hmm. metal poisoning. Post in the Welcome. comments what kind of metals you want us to pump into your town's water supply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do like instead of live shows, we do uh, like a local event where we come to your town's water facility and we just pump metals. Spin, into it. spin the wheel of metals <laughs> and metalloids. <laughs> oh, you get uh, antimony. <laughs> Good luck. Yes. Yeah. Maybe some. Uh, maybe some. Uh, Shit, what are the what are all the rare earths that just explode on contact? Like a oh sodium. like a cesium. Sodium, yeah. 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 Well, that was we did it. safety third. Shake hands for danger. Yeah, I got through that Nailed quicker it. than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a good episode. Thanks, everybody. Our next I'm gonna episode go lay down. will be on the Tacoma Narrows <laughs> Bridge disaster. That's why right. you say that like it's a question. It's not a question. Our next it's episode fact. will be on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. Oh, it's a statement of fact. <laughs> it will be on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. Oh, okay. When when's Franklin Twelve? I I need listen commercials. W- 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 when when the international <laughs> shipping on the shirts? Commercials. <sighs> give me give go me. Go listen to Lions Led by Donkeys. Go listen to Kill James Bond. Go listen to Trash Future. Can I lay down now, please? Uh, yes. Yes. Go.
Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>